good Saturday morning, everybody. It's Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic, in here with you, and my good buddy, my video wrangler, Sean McBee. And this morning, we are... I say this morning because maybe this is a Saturday morning for you. Yeah, I would I would like to give a shout-out to the bots that are going to pull this as soon as it gets posted. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be happening a lot lately, but, you know. Anyway, we're watching one of our favorite cartoons. This is Soup... Super Rabbit. Are you all right, Sean? I'm so happy. And that's uh, that was uh, t- the Story Man's uh, voice, Ted Pierce, that we heard in the background. It's a dive Super bomber. Super Rabbit. Now, part of the reason why Sean and I love this cartoon so much, and there's such, I mean, there's so many good reasons to like this cartoon. I'm sure we have many reasons that our audience shares for loving this cartoon. It is a lovable cartoon. But we have an individual, exclusive to us, reason for loving this cartoon. Are you going to tell the people what it is, Sean? No, you're doing such a good job. You don't know, do you know what it is? I have no idea what you're talking about. Really? You don't even know where I'm going with this? No. Oh, it's going to hurt when I reveal it, too. Well, Sean and I, on a normal day, maybe Sean just literally got here uh, from working nine hours at his job, so ten hours. So maybe, Eat at Joe's. Eat at Joe's. Maybe he doesn't remember off the bat but we got to uh uh talk fondly about this cartoon with chuck jones i mean i remember talking to chuck jones we talked about this and how his favorite joke in the entire cartoon is deep in the heart of texas that's right the sign that's coming up here so every time i see this cartoon and that i love that this guy can't even get this word out (laughs) A super vitamize, locked in flavorize, iriamize, modern design. Also, please note, this man does not have a mustache. <laughs> that is nose hair from his nostrils. Yeah. Yeah. So, um. You actually see his lip draw back from it at some yeah, point. Yeah, right there, too. Right there. Yeah, it is, it's definitely nose hair hanging from the nose. <laughs> it's so amazing. I actually didn't notice that until very, very later on in life. When I actually acquired nose hair myself, and I realized that it could happen, and probably does. But um, this is kind of the, the, the Superman. You're a comic book guy, Sean. The Superman costume that, that Bugs puts on in this. What is this like early 40s, or are they off in their era of, uh, of getting it's, a Superman? It's, uh, it's meant to be referential. But not because remember Warner Brothers did not own DC Comics. At That's this point. right. Yeah. In fact, at this point, they were still called National Periodicals, not even DC Comics. <laughs> hey, whoop, pardon me. Wrong costume. Bugs is officially a cosplayer. But um, yeah. So uh, and it's clearly meant to be like a Halloween costume. Yeah. Because it's got that little uh, drawstring at the pants. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually a good point. I've never put that together before um this is one of our favorite <laughs> jokes favorite joke ever. hello mr rabbit a rabbit up here <laughs> that's such a good joke it's it's actually not even like it doesn't feel like a chuck joke that, what do you mean <laughs> it feels like a clampet joke or a text joke yeah well the addressing of the the camera and and, and, and the just the whole there it is deep in the heart of that's chuck's favorite joke in this cartoon um, you were saying something, and I stopped your flow. I'm yeah, uh, I was. I was just saying that the whole like premise of the the horse in the sky and being surprised. It, it doesn't ring as tr- very much, Chuck. So, so much as Chuck trying to probably emulate Tex, because he was a very, very, very big fan of Tex. Although this was the time he pro- proclaimed in his book that he wasn't really aware of Tex's genius. Well, he also went. Uh, he followed the same career path post WB that Tex, that Tex did. did. Not necessarily. They both went to MGM. Well, yeah, yeah, but it. it but went, I mean, Tex went to create new things, and Chuck went to take over Tom and Jerry. No, Tex didn't create anything of value after this. I mean, he he literally was at an ad agency, and uh, one of the no, it, his time at MGM gave us droopy. No, no, no. I'm talking squirrel. about you're talking about after he left MGM because when no, he, I said after he left Warner Brothers, he went to MGM. After Chuck left Warner Brothers, he went to MGM. Yeah, okay. Because the time when Chuck left uh, Warner Brothers to go to MGM in Texas career was not a good time. 
because uh, he, right, no, he had I'm, left MGM. I'm, I'm not saying they did it at the same time. I'm saying oh, okay, yeah. they followed the same path. Chuck just was behind Tex. <laughs> Why don't it pin it? Heavy <laughs> artillery. Uh, and then he takes the precautionary carrot. <laughs> and this guy has the the most generic Mel voice ever. Yeah. Mel uses this guy's voice all over the place. Now, this is one of the only occasions where it's okay for Bugs Bunny to be playing basketball with other cartoon characters. Space Jam, it's not appropriate. <laughs> no. Because you'll notice Bugs Bunny isn't screaming in anyone's help in, in anyone's face that he needs their help to play basketball. Look how well he's doing all yeah. on his own. And he wouldn't need to do that. The only thing the suit provides there is that he can that he can fly. I love this. Let's sing it, everybody. Boom, bah. Oh, and look at the uh, oh, the smear drawings. The smear, like like uh from Dover Boys. Yeah, like mm-hmm. Dover Boys. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh this is that was one of the things that you know Chuck took from Dover Boys and put back in his cartoon under under protest from Leon Schlesinger, although I doubt Leon was like, those smear drawings, stop it. <laughs> well it was probably because Leon told him not to do anything like that or he'd get fired. Yeah. So he was probably like, Yeah, f <laughs> you. Can I cuss on these? Well, you can. I bleep them, but you can cuss. But uh, now it's not the time to ask. Really. <laughs> <laughs> and I, this is definitely not Chuck's best work in terms of his draftsmanship. He's um, he is in charge of all these layout poses, and they're not they're not his best work. He hasn't he hasn't the really second sky horse. Are you sure about that? Oh yeah, yeah. There's two sky horses in this cartoon. That's what we could, we can rate this cartoon as two sky horses up. <laughs> we should, we should label, we should, we should rate all the cartoons by how many by, sky by horses. Sky horses. <laughs> It'll just be the rating system. How many sky horses do we give this one? Yipe. I've always been a fan of the saying out loud the <laughs> the sound effect. The sound effect. Yeah. Gasp. I wish I could remember who did this drawing right here. Yeah, this is beautiful. This looks like Clampet. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Anyway, then the this this gag coming up here is the one that really dates the the cartoon more than anything because it's a World War II joke. <laughs> Got to do your part, boys. And then he he did this song too at the end of uh, Wild Hair. Right? I don't remember. I mean, this song was everywhere at the time. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, everybody, we love this Chuck cartoon, and thanks for watching with us. Can I just point out Berlin and Tokyo are not in the same direction? You certainly can, and indeed you did. <laughs>